Shalom, and welcome to Challenging Torah. This week's Torah portion, Kitisa, is a challenge. This is the ultimate challenge to the Jewish people, the challenge of transformation. How do you take a people who have been slaves, who've lived in a culture that is completely not their own, and transform them into a cohesive unit, an Israelite people who believe in one God, and that God is invisible. How quickly can transformation happen to a people who have been slaves? It's interesting. I look at the newspaper today in Egypt. Egypt of 2013-14 reminds me exactly of the Jews at this moment in the desert. How do you turn a people who have not had a democracy into a democracy that actually works? And we've seen a swing to dictatorship and from dictatorship to fundamentalism and back to a military dictatorship and chaos, chaos in the streets constantly. And they are in the country where they were born and are still eating the same food from the same plates. Imagine the Israelite people. So of course they panic. And the first challenge is just how do I remember what I just heard at Sinai? All of this Torah portion, in fact, the entire rest of this story is can I remember the experience that I had standing in Sinai or how quickly will I forget? There's a book by Nora Ephron that I've been reading called I Remember Nothing. Sort of my life, I remember nothing, right? What was her name? Who did I just say that I would call back? So imagine trying to remember an experience that is so vital and so deep, yet there were details that we didn't hear, that we couldn't really understand, and of course they don't remember. And so within moments we find the challenge of timing. Moses disappears up into the mountain to chat with God, to receive the tablets, because even God knows, you know what, I better write it down. He'll forget, I better write it down. So God, while writing down those tablets, has Moses at his side, and the people panic. They basically, the word is boshesh, they, they panic because he's tardy or late. But it's only 40 days. How long is too long? How long before we abandon the faith that we have? When do we panic? When do we say it's time to go into disaster mode? When do we look for plan B before plan A has even had a chance to roll itself out? How quickly do we lose faith? That's really the big challenge of this Torah portion. So along with the challenge of timing and the challenge of transformation is the challenge of commitment. The sages love to depict God as the bridegroom left under the chuppah as the bride is flirting actually with the guy that she used to be intimate with. And then the minute the wedding has been consummated at this wonderful moment of Sinai, about a month and a week later, she's sleeping with the old boyfriend. She is back to the golden calf, right? God as jilted lover, or is Moses God's lover? Is this a love story between God and the Jewish people and their problems, or Moses and God and their problems? It's entirely not clear. As a matter of fact, the role of Moses is very confusing. And the people say, what, what happened to that man Moses who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Wait a minute. Wasn't the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt? How quickly we forget. God is not pleased. And says to Moses, in a domestic fight, this could be at anybody's household, but it's God and Moses. Your children, the ones you, Moses, brought out of Egypt, look what they're doing down there. And God says, do something. And Moses says, to them, it's not my people, God, it's your people. You brought them out of the land of Egypt. And God argues with Moses and says to him, Lech, red, go down and do something. And then they look at the scene below, and God says, you know what, this is, they are in ecstasy down there. Forget it, wrong people, 
I'm going to wipe them out, and you, Moses, can have a whole new set. Sort of like Noah is given that same chance. But Moses is not Noah. Moses is a prophet, and Moses is our teacher. And so Moses chooses his humanity. He is called Moses Rabbeinu, not Moses our savior, but Moses our teacher. And Moses says, no, I belong with the people. And he goes down. But as he's descending the mountain, he sees dancing that it's not war and it's not panic and fear. It's ecstasy as they worship this calf. A people united in a dance like a wave and he's angry and the tablets fly from his hands. Perhaps the sages tell us the letters flew off and they became so heavy and they're smashed. But didn't they need to smash those tablets, those first tablets written by God? After all, we don't have tablets as a fetish any more than we have Moses as a demigod. Moses is a human, and as a human, he will rewrite those tablets. And as human beings, we will remember and forget and remember and forget as we struggle to understand what's been written on those tablets. Join us as we discuss our challenges, all of us, this Saturday morning as we continue our exploration of Israel, the golden calf, and the challenges of our lives. Shabbat Shalom.